talk to you about childcare and to kind of give you what the current status is with childcare. Sorry, guys. Current current status of childcare in the state of um, in our area. So let me just kind of start with that. And I want to tell you to start with why the Iowa Women's Foundation and how we got to childcare, because I think that's really important to understand that first. Because we didn't just wake up one morning and say, okay, we're gonna work on childcare now. Um, so first of all, we are one of 140 women's funds all around the globe working to improve the lives of women and girls in one way or another. Some may do it through domestic violence, some may do it through um, human trafficking. We look at ec economic self-sufficiency. So what we do is we're working to improve the lives of Iowa's women and girls through economic self-sufficiency. We work to break down the barriers that are keeping women from being successful. Because we believe if women are successful, their families will be, and ultimately their communities will be much better off. So I, what we do is we decided after a year of hands-on conversations, and um, looking at the research, we identified what were those barriers to economic success for women. Employment, childcare, housing, education and training, transportation, mentors. Healthcare came up in one community, but we did this back in 2016, and if you remember back in 2016 is when the Affordable Care Act came out. So childcare or healthcare really kind of became a non-issue at that point because everybody thought that the Affordable Care Act would cover the results. After the of the six barriers were, we traveled back to these 18 communities, convened to the table our stakeholders in the and said, why? Why are women and girls struggling? And what is your primary barrier? Which do you think we should work on first? Half of the communities, if you start in Sioux City and draw a line diagonally through the state, you'll see chose childcare as the number one issue. Quite honestly, we were shocked. We thought for sure it would have been employment or education and training, but it was childcare. So we did what we do best. We went back and we looked at the research some more. And we asked ourselves why. Why is childcare such a big issue? Well, what we learned, first of all, was that 75% of Iowa's households with children under the age of six had all available parents working outside of the home. Iowa is number one in the United States with the most parents working outside of the home with young children. On average, one in two children go without access to quality affordable child care. And in the last five years, we have lost 33% of our child care businesses. To us, all of this was unacceptable, and because our communities were telling us that child care was the issue, we decided to put all of our resources and our efforts towards the child care barrier. Then, and, and, and to, just to kind of show you the interesting thing is, this happened prior to COVID. I'll just give you a little bit of an example. I thought maybe you'd like to hear what's happening because of COVID, because I know we've heard a lot about child care in the um, newspaper and through the news. At the height of um, the pandemic, 829 licensed centers closed in our state. And 171 in-home providers closed, impacting another 50,000 slots. We already had a shortfall of 350,000 slots in our state, and now another 50,000 are being impacted. Um, the good news is most of them have come back. The bad news is they come back with limited revenue and skyrocketing expenses that they can't control. I like to say to business leaders, imagine if all of a sudden your income was cut in half and your expenses were going up and you couldn't control it. That's what child care providers are dealing with right now. And that's why we're trying to help. There's a little bit of extra um, information that I kind of would like to share with you. Let's look at the Johnson County data. I've given you just basically the state data, but I knew you would be interested in what's going on in Johnson County. And I'm going to give you pre-COVID and I'm going to give you now, just so you can get an understanding of the difference. So, in, you were at 74%, so just a little bit below the state. So 
So you have just a few less parents working, and now you've got the 72, so it's still going down. So your parents are staying home now more. There were 22,516 children ages 0 to 12. Now there's 22,438. So you've dropped just a few children ages 0 to 12. And we do go up to 12 because we believe the before and after school programming is very important and needs to be taken into consideration when we talk about child care. There were 9,086 slots available. Now there's 9,722. Good news. The numbers have gone down, but the slots have gone up. So we are starting to see it go up, but the bad news is we still have a shortfall in Johnson County of over 12,000 slots. But if all of those 22,000 children don't need care, even if half of them do, we still have a really big shortage in Johnson County. Three children, um, it did go from 2.5 children needing care, you now have three children for every one slot available. In Johnson County, has lost 19% of its providers in the last five years, doing much better than the state average at 33. You're at 19. The other thing that we like to look at is child care assistance. Child care assistance is for those individuals who want to work, but they can't afford child care so they get support. I find it very interesting that um, those that have accepted child care assistance programs 32%, it's gone down 32% in the last five years, and in the last 10 years, 42% of our programs have stopped taking child care assistance. So we want you to work, but if you don't have anyone to take care of your children, how can you work? We have to figure that out, and we have to take a look at that. I am quickly just gonna share with you a little bit of business data, because if anybody knows, one of the things I talk about a lot is child care for years was seen as a family issue. Families dealt with it, we didn't think about it. Child care is not a family's issue anymore. Child care is an economic issue and a workforce issue, and we need to talk about it like that. And the National Chamber of Commerce Foundation did a report um, on how child care issues were impacting the businesses in the state of Iowa. We are losing $935 million a year to the economy in the state of Iowa because of child care issues. Almost a billion dollars is being lost because of child care. $153 million are being lost because of annual tax revenue. And businesses are losing $781 million a year to their bottom line because of recruitment and retention issues related to child care. These numbers are staggering. Why? We ask ourselves, why are we seeing these kind of numbers? Because working parents are dealing with child care issues. I am so glad I am at the age I am, I don't have to worry about child care right now. Because 65% of parents are late to work or leave early every year because of child care. 65%. Working parents miss 4.3 days of work every six months, and they are late to work 7.5 times. That's a lot of absenteeism, or work productivity stop, that is impacting businesses' bottom lines. In addition to that, 85% wish their employers would provide some kind of child care benefit, and 63% say, that the child care availability and cost impacts their careers. I can tell you that I have had HR executives tell me that people are turning down jobs, they're turning down promotions because of a lack of child care in particular areas. So we need to address that. The Women's Foundation really realized that we had a crisis in Iowa. We had a child care crisis, we had a workforce ish crisis. Both of these crises are interrelated and dependent on each other and we need to address them together. So that's what we did. We started the Building Community Child Care Solutions Collaborative. And Iowa City has been a part of this collaborative since the beginning. And I'm really excited to be able to share that with you because not all communities have been. Um, and this program that we started is the only program of its kind. Um, we have 44 communities all across the state 
that are now working with over 750 volunteers to increase awareness and to explore ways that we can make investments in childcare that will support our families, our businesses, and our communities. Not only in the short term, but also in the long term. And we're looking at solutions like building and expanding, getting businesses involved, starting after school programs, um, looking at how we can address childcare from second and third shift, and how can community colleges play a difference, um, and how can we support the workforce. The childcare workforce is another big issue that we're working on as well. So that's what the collaborative is doing. And I wanted to just share with you the, you can see here's the map of all of our communities. And of course, Iowa City is in there, which is where you're concerned with. And so we're going to talk now about what's going on in Iowa City and what is the solution group in Iowa City doing. Just wanted to quickly say to you, before COVID, we were really working hard on this issue. And this is what was going on. Um, the communities were working together. We had got the public to now recognize childcare as an economic issue. Businesses are coming together to make an investment in child care. We're working to recruit in, um, new providers. We're working to support and maintain current providers. We're putting funding towards um, solutions from the Women's Foundation as well as other public-private partnerships. And we're working with our elected officials to really see what is some of that public policy that we can get implemented. I think in the last year, year and a half, there has been more child care policy come forward than there was in the last 50 years combined. At least they're talking about it, and at least they're trying to make some kind of difference in it. So now what I want to do is share with you what your group in Johnson County decided to do, because this is where I think you as an organization can help them, and I hope that you'll look at what they're doing and see where there could be some collaboration. So we can be to the table again, stakeholders in this community, and they identified four solutions. They wanted to look at building and expanding, they wanted to look at supporting the child care workforce, and they wanted to get businesses involved, and they wanted before and after school programs. When we work with the community and they choose where they want to put their efforts and what their, um, their um, solutions are, we ask them to set milestones. We want them to really think about how will they know they're successful. How will they know that they've done what they need to do? Well, they wanted three businesses to make an investment in child care. They want to increase capacity by 10% and add 1,000 high quality slots and increase the CCA threshold in this community. They also wanted to increase um, and expand before and after school programming into every um, elementary school in the Johnson County area that did not already have one. We know that's pretty good in the Iowa City District, but in a number of the other districts within Johnson County, there are not after school programs. And so they wanted to fix that. So they started working, and they were doing a really, really, really good job. Um, and then in a matter of weeks, COVID hit, and just really sent everybody into a, a, you know, a turmoil. What are we going to do? We knew that we couldn't stop. We knew that we had to keep moving forward, and that we had to take a look at what was going on. Um, and we realized if COVID did anything for child care, it shined a light on it, and it shined the importance on it, and it really let people know that maybe what the Women's Foundation had been talking about for the last three years was something we ought to take a look at. Maybe they kind of were being smart with what they were talking about. Um, and so now we've really been involved trying to move all of this work forward. And I wanted to give you an update before I open this up for questions, is I wanted to share with you um, a little bit about what they're doing in Johnson County so you can get an idea. Because um, this organization, uh, this coalition is doing a really good job. And as the Women's Foundation role, we're kind of that convener, that voice, that connector. And when somebody, if one community does something really good and we think another community ought to look at it, we recommend that they visit. And so a couple of the programs that are going on here in Johnson County, we're highly recommending to other programs. So first of all, we know there's a shortage in the child care workforce. We know that the average salary is $9.50. You can go to Walmart, you can go to McDonald's, you can go anywhere pretty much, 
and make $15 to $18 an hour. Child care centers and providers cannot afford to pay that kind of money. There is a huge disconnect. And they don't provide benefits. So we need to look at how can we build up that pipeline? How can we increase the staffing? So we're looking at an at refugee immigration program that is a partnership between Kirkwood Community College, Four C's, and, C and um, Cedar Rapids, the Child Care Resource and Referral. So that's a really exciting program that's getting ready to start. They'll be starting it in the fall. Um, and they're really looking at ways to um, bring that population into um, child care. Because what we're finding too is there's a lot of people who want to work, but they don't have culturally sensitive child care. And so if we can train um, in women from that community to be the providers, then additional women can go to work while their children are getting the care that they want them to get. We also are working on, there's a partnership between the Iowa City Community School District and um, Kirkwood Community College on creating a CDA Academy. This is going to be a part of their career program that they have here in the community, and they're going to really work to see if they can get those high school students who have an interest in child care, the credentials that they need to maybe start moving forward. The other thing we're trying to do is improve the wages and the benefits for providers, and so they have started some special programs um, with county and city um, ARPA funding. So the, the um, recovery dollars that have come down to the state are now being used to help support the wages and um, provide benefits and incentives for child care providers. Um, it's not a long-term fix, but at least it's a way right now to keep them in the industry um, until we can figure out how we can address those issues. And last but not least, they are increasing slot availability. There are three different centers in the area that have increased their slots. Child Serve has increased to 10, 10 slots, Little Creations Academy 29, and the Arcus of um, East Iowa 40. So they're recruiting and retaining the, task, the new workforce. They are supporting the current workforce, and they're trying to increase the availability of slots. They're doing a really good job. So here, I, I like to leave every kind of presentation with a little bit of um, a recommendation and a call for action. And so I would like to encourage you all tonight, and I know you're going to do this because of the next steps with what you're going to do after I leave, but get the facts. Learn more. You've heard from me tonight. I've shared stuff with you. Go out, find other things, learn what's going on, and why child care really does matter to our families and our businesses. Educate yourself. Educate your companies that you might work for. Educate your family, your network. Let them know how important child care is. And then really assess how this organization can make an impact and make a difference. Develop those strategies that you can look at to support child care in Johnson County and help alleviate the crisis that we're dealing with. And you can do that, of course, and give you some ideas, and then you get to choose what you want to do. Um, support the local building community child care solutions collaborative work that's being done. There's a number of people that are leading it. They would love your help. They would love your expertise. They would love your time, your um, experience. Figure it out. Become a voice. Educate others on the child care issue. Really share what you're learned and then educate and talk about it. Advocate with your local child care legislators about what's going on and talk about what's happening. If you need some information, I'm happy to share with you. We've got a whole um, agenda that we're working on that we'd be happy to have your help with. And finally, take the dollars that you're bringing together and really find a way that you can support the child care projects that are in this county that can make a difference, um, not only for our families, but for our businesses and the community as a whole. So that's